Richard Haas is the president of the Council on Foreign Relations, and he tells us that we are living in a world of disarray. And David Brooks is writing to us that we are experiencing a spiritual void. And he wonders how we are struggling to stay human amid all of the chaos around us. And then Josh Groban once again sings that when it seems we have lost our way, we find ourselves once again at Christmas Day. That in the midst of it all, we come to Christmas. And Christmas Day, we celebrate God's awareness of our struggle to stay human. We celebrate God's awareness of our disarray, God's awareness of our spiritual void, God's awareness of, have, of our having lost our way. On Christmas Day, we celebrate God's desire to give light to our darkness, God's desire to fill our spiritual void, God's desire to reveal who this sometimes distant God really is. Now the disarray and the divisions that we are experiencing in our world, our nation, our church, were also experienced in the life of the first century with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Zealots. That first Christmas, life in Nazareth was very difficult for everyone. And 2,000 years later, we view that Christmas through highly sanitized lenses. But as Jody Magnus points out in her book, Stone and Dung, Oil and Spit, she tells us that first Christmas, there was garbage and sewage, sewage tossed outside in the alleyways, and the conditions were filthy. That women's lives were filled mainly with labor, and that life expectancy was in the 30s. So the main characters of our idealized Christmas story, the family that we look upon today as holy, was considered, as James Martin tells us, throwaway people. They were considered socially and economically below the peasantry, since they did not even own a plot of land. And James Martin writes that, Jesus came from the backwater of a backwater. Isn't it interesting that God's presence through the incarnation happened through throwaway people. God could have chosen to come become one of us in a great ruling family in Judea, or a wealthy Galilean family, or a merchant, or a scholar, or perhaps being born into the Roman dynasty. But God chose something very strange. He chose to become human through throwaway people. So we must ask ourselves, why would God choose the lowly and not the elite of society to make God's presence known? There must be a powerful message for us in this. And perhaps the message that God presents to us is that God is not interested in the trappings of the world. God is not interested in power or prestige or glory or riches. God is not interested in being president or pope, cardinal or bishop or CEO. There is something so much more basic that God's breaking into our world is all about. It's about God's presence in all people, no matter what their social status, and God's desire that we love and care for each other, no matter what our social status might be. Perhaps God's message 2,000 years ago that we really haven't followed very well 
is that God does not need to be enshrined in magnificent cathedrals adorned with gold and incense, but that God needs to be enshrined in our hearts. And of course, it was this Jesus, a Palestinian Jew, considered part of a throwaway people who changed the course of history, who challenged the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Zealots for not loving enough, for not caring enough, for being self-righteous, for being exclusive, for lording it over others, for manipulating others for their own agenda. Society hasn't changed much in the last 2,000 years. Yes, we have much fancier toys, amazing advanced technology, but the divisions, the polarizations, and the prejudice of the first century, they are all alive today in the 21st century. And the voice of this Palestinian Jew has been quieted. His message of inclusion and compassionate acceptance has met many deaf ears. So as we gather this evening and celebrate the birth of this Jewish child, who we now call our Savior, we must get beyond the highly sanitized lens of our Christmas feast back to the real message of Christmas. You remember the movie Polar Express. In that movie, the children are sleeping and dreaming, and it's all very magical. And the lyrics remind us that we were all dreamers not so long ago. But one by one, we all had to grow up, and the magic slipped away. Well, this Christmas, it's hard to see much magic as we come to celebrate. There is so much violence and betrayal in our world, and even in our church. But with this awareness of a world that we can no longer view through highly sanitized lenses, a world where we have to rid ourselves of illusions, here we are again at Christmas. And Christmas calls us to be dreamers once again. And there is no time to waste. In this world of disarray, you and I, we must spread the message of the one that we now call the Christ. We must believe in the message even if the messengers have betrayed us and failed us. It's believing in the message of this Palestinian Jew, part of a throwaway people, that we can find our way once again. And what's the message? It's so simple and yet so complicated in this world. It's a message of compassion, of love, of inclusion, of acceptance, of tolerance. We're called to believe. We're called to make Christmas real.